Hey guys, and welcome back to IMF Gunblood. Today, we're taking a look at the MS-06FZ, or Zaku FZ, also known as the Zaku Kai, from the War in the Pocket series. So, uh, we're going to take a look at him. First, we're going to just take a look at the figure, his articulation, accessories, and then we'll kind of go over um, the build, how the build goes, um, any kind of cool details of the build, and um, where you're going to need to add paint and detail to make him more match um, his artwork. So let's begin with the review. And here he is. And this is the only two accessories you'll have left over, minus a few polycaps. Which, you know, if you've seen one polycap, you've seen them all. But um, his alternate head... His alternate head is probably my favorite feature, even though somehow I have managed to lose his other power cable, uh, which I will probably, honestly, it doesn't quite fit, but you can trim it and it'll get far enough back into, let me rearrange my lighting here, aha, and it'll go far enough back into the helmet here that you won't be able to tell that it's not the right one. But, um, yeah, this is kind of based off the German helmet. Not seen in the show, but I think the unicorn version of the FZ that's in the show, I'm pretty sure he had this head. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure there is a P Bandai kit of this exact kit, and I think the only difference is a different gun. I might even have the same gun. But instead of building it with that head, you're supposed to build it with this head. I believe that's the only difference, and it's a P Bandai. Yeah. Anyway, so that's his head. And, of course, for the right arm, you have a machine gun holding hand, which can be used to well, hold the machine gun, which he can do very well. But we'll get into that here in a little bit. Let's get these off to the side. All right, now let's just take a look at the figure. Very nice. Nice detail. Um, not many seam lines. Pretty much the only seam lines are in the, uh, fore or in the, uh, the forearms. There's one across here. Uh, Almost see it. I do have them glued because I'm going to be removing them. And then the bottom is a seam line. Which really easily could have and should have been a separate piece. Because it's like this armor plate that goes on the bottom here. And they could have very easily turned that into a separate piece. They do it on the Marsai and quite a few other kits. So lazy Bandai, lazy. But, and of course you got a seam line on the shoulder. Which as you can also tell I have glued and I will be sanding down. But, um, yeah, overall, a very great kit. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and then, of course, you know, he's got his heat hawk on this backpack. Which I'm going to remove so that I don't accidentally break it, which I've done on another kit before. So we'll just take a look at him. Uh, he holds his gun very well. There's no, um, you know, uh, peg and hole system or anything, but he holds it very well, nice and tight. Uh, well, I guess we'll start at the feet. Legs are nicely um, detailed, I think. Lots of thruster detail. We'll, they will have to be painted, but it won't be that hard to do. And, of course, you've got the one back in there. Um, his feet are very nicely articulated. Um, they will come out, well, about that far. Um, nice detail again down there. No hollow points. Um, interesting build. I mean, there's quite a lot of pieces in this foot. More than I was expecting. Um, it does have a fixed ankle, though. It's not like the, um, the, uh, what is it? The, I think it's number 50, the Zaku 1. Or even the older Zaku kit, kits where it has, like, a double-jointed ankle. I mean, this is literally as far as it's going to come. Which is plenty for him. But as you can see, it does swivel decent enough. Um, his... Knee joints are very interesting. I like like the mechanical look of the two joints there. Um, you're definitely not going to get a full bend. Uh, you will go 90 degrees, but no further than that, just because of the power cable. But um, the knee is really nice. I like the detail there. Let's see, there we go. I like the detail. It splits at the bottom and the top. It has that separate knee joint. And this knee is very different from a normal Zaku, which um, at the end of the video, we'll compare it to the... Um, uh, origin Zaku too because I think it's one of the you know nicer Zaku kits though personally I prefer this kit which I'll go into details later um, his skirt armor I feel like it can be separated but I really don't remember off the top of my head 
Um, I may separate it later, but I'll just split and uh, has some nice detail. More uh, kind of verny detail which you'll have to paint in to there and then the ones here and his crotch thruster and he's got his hand grenades which is removable but of course it's just one piece and it's hollow so we'll just stick those back on and leave them there it's kind of nice that they painted them in red they could have left them you know green or black or something all right let me rearrange this because we're still pretty dark here there we go all right um his side skirts will go up uh that's about it as far as they go and then there's that one and then like I said, the front will go up so uh, he can do a full front kick and he is an older kit so he has a ball joint not the uh, kind of the separate rotating joint up there he can go out that far no splits from this guy um, his legs will turn out about that far which is plenty for him and it will turn in that far which looks really weird like i gotta go b but uh yeah it's back skirt obviously won't move at all does it wait okay his back skirt does move interesting so yeah you can kind of see in there it's oh, i can't but it's on a poly cap that's what it was so his back skirt does move actually which is interesting so he can't bring his leg back a little bit now, of course it's kind of gimmick for his legs is the fact that, I don't know if you can see, but there is a track in here. And that allows you to bring his legs up to where you're supposed to be able to get him in like a... Some kind of a sitting pose, like where he had his arm back in here. Kind of like that. And like he has his holding hand up to his cockpit, which kind of reenacts the scene from the uh, movie. I don't think it was a, t a show, I think it was a movie. Where, um... Of course, the guy that I can never remember his name was talking to the little boy before he went and attacked the Alex Gundam. But uh, moving up in the torso, he can turn a little bit. This is another interesting build is the um, power cables are actually attached to the hips, not to the chest like a lot of them are. So um, the power cables do not get in the way, though he can't you know, turn all the way around. But when he does twist, it does not get in the way. He does have an um, ab crunch. Not very much, but you can kind of pull it out just a little bit to get a little bit more. But all the way in, I think it's plenty right there. Um, his head, uh, you can, no you can't. Cannot do a 360, just the way that the head's mounted on here. It's on a double jointed um, ball joint, but then there's a little plastic piece, if I get his head off, that uh, covers the whole joint, and that really limits what he can do. Because the back bottom of his head, let's see if I actually get this to show up. The, uh, come on. Ah. Man, I really got to figure out how to get some light on this thing. There we go. It's actually kind of comes down and that fits into the top of his head like a groove or into the groove. So it kind of locks his head into certain positions. The mono eye does not turn. There's no way to turn it. Where you place the sticker is where his mono eye is going to go. So keep that in mind. But uh, I mean, it moves enough. You can get some po you know, poses out of it. So that's all that matters. The head is really nice. It has no split down the middle, which is always wonderful. The um, seam from where the top of the helmet goes on is hidden as a uh, seam line. I mean, a uh, panel line. Of course, I can't get it to show up. Let's see here. I just pop his head off and I'll show you. Yep, there we go. So you can kind of see how it curves up like that. So yeah, it gives a really nice, it's really nice hidden um, seam line as a panel, panel line. So uh, there's that. Now his arms are on really nice joints. Like I said, I'm a big fan of, um, I don't know exactly what you call them, peg, peg shoulders, I guess. Well, they're not a ball joint, they're just a peg. I feel like they're a lot more secure. Um, but I mean, it is a little limited. Um, his shoulder arm will go up a little bit. Um, if you do lift it up, it'll allow you to... Go about that far out. Which isn't that far, but I mean, it's enough. He's a giant robot. You know, can't expect him to do uh, backflips or anything. Unless it was like a Gundam or something. But it uh, does a full 360. And um, there is a pivoting joint in here. So he can come forward like that. And he can go back a little bit. And then it 
it self wiggles in addition to the shoulder. So he's got a lot of articulation in his shoulder. Shoulders are good. Um, then he's got a swivel at the bicep, and he's got a elbow joint. It's just just a little bit more than ninety degrees. Mm, no, okay, it's it's just straight up ninety degrees. But I mean, like I said, that's plenty. I mean, unless you really want to give like a pump and fist, I like ninety degree elbows. I don't really see why the need for any more than that, but that's just my own opinion. Um, other arm, same thing. This is a 360. You can move back and forth uh, with a shield. This one, see if we move the shield out of the way. Now he goes up about the same. About the same. And there's the shield. I did put the sticker on there. Um, it's not as detailed as I thought it was, but it still has, you know, decent detailing in it so don't look just a big flat piece of plastic his gun on the other hand this thing is nice lots of detail i think it's the mmp i don't know what the model is, but it's a 90 millimeter machine gun and uh, the magazine is removable which i'm sure if you really wanted to you could uh where's that hole at you could probably glue it like let's see let's bring his other his holding hand and you could probably glue the magazine into this hand, make it look like he was reloading it. Which would be a cool thing. But, um, yeah. So, oh, and here's his backpack. He's got three thrusters and another move. Which, of course, they've got some nub marks because I haven't finished him. I'm going to go in there and paint those. And he's got some nice details up on the top. Some more vernies. Verni, verniers, verners, vernies. How do you pronounce that? Verners? Verniers? Little tiny thrusters. He's got more of those there. He's got more on his shoulder. And yeah, just overall nice articulation. He can get into plenty of decent poses. So uh, let's quickly bring in the Origins Zaku 2. I'm really sorry, the picture is getting kind of fuzzy. Let me spread these lights out a little bit more. But here he is. Of course, I really got to work on my lighting setup. Let's see. Uh, well, about best as it's going to get. So there you have the two compared. He's definitely got a wider chest, which I like. And, of course, the gimmick that these Origin kits have that I just don't like is, of course, the chest crunch. Like I'd rather have the shoulders that pop out. I mean, they do pop out, but I don't know. This just kind of gets in the way, I think. On my um, Shars Zaku too, I actually glued his chest in place so it won't, so it wouldn't move. But um, there he is compared to him, so you can get like a size comparison. Um, the FZ is definitely taller. Uh, let's see, bend them down a little bit. There you go. It's a little bit taller, um, but about you know about the same. Like they, you can tell they're from the same family line. About the same articulation. I think his legs may go back a little bit more. No, they're about the same. Um, and then his ankles are definitely about the same. Like I say, he's got a little more articulation in his shoulders because of the chest crunch. And then his head's definitely no, about the same, I'd say. And then he's got a little bit of an ab crunch, ab swivel. And uh, his is on a polycap and a stud, where his is a ball joint. So you got that difference. But um, overall... Definitely up to par with modern Zaku kits. Um, I need to get the F2, because I think the F2 is based on his joints, inner frame, I think. I'm probably wrong, because I don't own one. But I'd say it's pretty close. I probably should have brought in the um, high-grade, the HDUC Zaku 2 high-mobility type. Kind of compare them, because he's got a completely different build. It's like the Zaku 1, the high-mobility, the F2, and the FZ, they all have different builds, so... Anything's better than the original Zaku. I think it's like number 40. Like, that thing's a brick. But still a good kit. Anyway. But let's get him out of the way. Alright. Um, leg design. It's very simple. Let's see if I can get this ankle off. There we go. Um, the foot build. Very simple. But very, very nice. Like I said, there's actually a lot of pieces in here. Um, nubs are pretty bad. Uh, let's see if I can get them to show up. Hang on. Nubs. Yeah, they're just. I guess it's just because of the dark plastic. They don't cut 
trim really well. I'll probably end up sanding them out. But no, this is his bin right here. So that kind of lifts up. Got decent detail in there. And then he's got a thruster in the bottom. But let's put his, uh, let's see here. Um, he is the kind of joint where once his leg is put together, it doesn't separate. Like, you know, you can't pull it straight. Oh, that was weird. A little lag there. You can't pull straight down and separate the two. They're, once they're together, they are together. Um, you see this piece in here. It is what holds the leg together. There's a front and the back, so there's no seam in the middle, which is always a good thing. And then that same gray piece in there makes the thruster in the back there. And then this little green piece here is a separate piece. I can't get it off at the almost. Come on. Come on. Okay, well, it slides up like that into there. And this is a separate piece, which will have to be, well, the top of that stays green, but this bottom piece of thruster, that's supposed to be gray. So I'll end up painting that. And then this will have to be painted. I mean, the paint apps aren't that bad. Main thing you have to add detail to is just these little vernies, verniers, verniers, the little thrusters. And then this thing, these up here will have to be painted. Um, his upper and lower body, it's, oh, it is a ball joint. I thought it was a stud. No, it is a, no? Yeah, it is a stud. Okay, I was right. <laughs> but, um, stand. Oh, yeah, he don't have a foot. But, um, let's, oh, yeah, see, once this plastic piece in here, once it goes on, it connects to the cockpit piece or the chet, the torso piece. So once it's on there, it's not coming off. Well, okay, I guess it does. But there's a little stud there, and that goes into the chest area. And then that goes on. This little red piece will fall out. At least on mine it did, so I had to glue it in there. But that is not a sticker. That is an actual red molded piece for the cockpit. And then, uh, like I've said before, his arms uh, are on a stud, which is in... I mean, it doesn't have a whole lot of movement, but it does move enough. A little bit of up and down. Just overall, nice. And another weird thing that's really cool about it, though, is his torso is built... Ugh, come off arm come on arm Ugh, there we go like these things are actually like snap on there can't really i don't know if you can see it or not but there are little like bumps on there that lock into that poly cap but uh, let's take his head off but the torso actually connects like usually they go straight up and down but this one will actually connect um vertical or like like diagonal um you can see it there and it comes across here so it makes uh for no pretty much no seam lines the seam lines that would be right here are um panel lining and then you've got the one back here but i really wouldn't worry about it and then of course the backpack is your typical backpack that's a pain in the butt to get off which is actually connected by a um poly cap and the backpack itself is two pieces there's this bottom half and the top half with the thruster detail and then the three thrusters and then that just connects to the back like so like so <sighs> okay I'll get it back on later but yeah that's how the torso goes together other than that it's pretty simple inside these are attached to a poly cap and then that's attached to in here. So nothing crazy in there. And then this piece here is separate. The collar around the head. Um, arm, very, very typical design. You've got the boxy shoulder in here. Then you've got a stud that comes through here. That connects into here. There's a poly cap in here. And that connects to that. And then the bicep is a separate piece. Up in there. And then you got the forearm and the hand, which is on a poly cap, which I should have mentioned in the review. You can do this. And then do that. I got, yeah, that's a, no, that's 90. Yeah, 90 degrees. And uh, there is detail under there. So if you were to take this off, you know, there is some panel lining in there you could do. And then, of course, you know, this one is just held on with a poly cap. Ball joint poly cap. 
There is some detail on the inside. I didn't think there was. I don't even own my own kids. Alright. But yeah, there's that. And I guess we'll give you a close-up of his machine gun. Lots of detail on this thing. I like this gun a lot. Big and bulky. Grenade in there. Paint that up. One thing I don't know, understand, though, is you've got three barrels or something. Like, you've got this one here, which I think is the actual barrel with the flash guard there. Muzzle flash guard thing. But then you've got one up here. Like, what's this one for? Because it can't shoot straight forward because it'll hit that guard there. I don't know. Maybe it's an exhaust for when the rounds go off. The, exhaust, the gases? I don't know. I'm not a gun expert. But I just I, I kind of found that weird. Maybe a cave can be a camera though, because once again it's covered by the flash guard there. So I don't know. But there you go. That is the Zaku FZ. Like I said, a great kit. If you can find it, grab it. Um, I've seen one I got, and I still see them on Amazon. They're about $15, $16 shipped. And that is a great price for a great kit. So if you can find one, I would highly recommend grabbing it. Did that ball joint go back in? Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, would you leave a like? If you have any questions about the kit, or comments about the video, um, let me know how you guys uh, do reviews, like like lighting-wise. I've got a desk lamp right here and right here, LED shining down. I'm thinking maybe I need to put something above it. Like, I've got a light shining off my kitchen up in the fan, but obviously it's not enough. How do you guys light your review area it's not as fuzzy as the gun cannon um mass production type was at least i don't think so but it's still too dark i need to make it brighter let me know how you guys do it so i can make my videos better but other than that uh let's keep putting this guy back together oh and there is a um, piece in here that covers the joint so you don't see that ugly poly cap which is it there it goes you can hear it actually like, snap on there listen that, there we go and uh, oh, just so you guys can see it, here he is with his German style head, which, I, like I said, I think looks great. I will be, he will be using this head. I'll just have to modify that hose to fit in there, power cable. I and mean, if you're wondering, these are not a soft rubbery plastic like a lot of power cables are in a lot of most kits. This is a really hard plastic. I'd be wrong though. I, I could have sworn. The other kits were soft. Uh, let's see here. Here's him. Is his soft? No, okay. It's about the same. So, never mind. Never mind about that. Let's give him back his machine gun. There we go. Oh, and of course, uh, he's got a heat hawk. Which, at least, it's not... Um, I was to say, no. At least, it's like in the right color. And, like, I, just one time, I wish they would mold the Heat Hawk in purple like it's supposed to be. But this one is actually in this color, so you don't have to paint it purple, which is cool. You will have to add some detail. There is lots of detail in there. And I don't have one to compare it to, but I'm pretty sure that this Heat Hawk is slightly bigger than most. So I don't know if he had a larger Heat Hawk, you know, like a custom option, or that's just how this is molded. But I feel like it's a lot bigger, which, of course, he can hold. Guess I should have showed this in the review too. So he can hold it. Come on, get. No, no, come on. No, there you go. Come on, bend, elbow, bend. So as you can see, he can hold his heat hawk. So there you go. And again, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. I will have more Gunpla reviews and unboxings. I may do some build videos, but that just takes up a lot of time. But otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and keep building.